I'm tired of this. I'm comfortable and I don't care about anything mentality. I'm sometimes that person. Well, get it together. (laughs) Have some respect for yourself. (laughs) Yay Networks. Hey guys, episode 35. I'm going to go on ahead and apologize for being stuffy and sounding nasally. And if I cough, I'm sorry. Don't get grossed out. I have, I think I have a sinus infection. I went to the doctor yesterday because I was trying to get antibiotics to clear this up before the weekend, but I didn't see my regular person that I normally could see because she's very popular. And I had to see someone else and she told me I had to wait 10 days. If symptoms still last, then they would give me an antibiotic. You sound a little better. Do I? Yeah, then I you think did I a couple sound of days like, ago. I've been drinking a lot of um, like tea and liquids today to clear this up. Good. Yeah, yeah, you sound good. I'm drinking a ginger beer. And we're falling apart over here. Jeff, he, his side hurts. He's like worried it's his appendix. I'm uh, becoming more... Uh, hypochondriac? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit of a hypochondriac. Yeah, when I get sick, Jeff's like, oh gosh, I better not get this. And then... Well, because I got something wrong with my side. People love diagnosing people, by the way. Oh. Like, if you say you have a problem, pe- people write in all the time to, like, my show, our show, and uh, they're like, Jeff's got a bump on the side of his neck. You should get it checked out. What? Like, people write in you all this. You don't have a bump on your neck? I know. I'm like, what are you talking about? Then they get me paranoid. People get me paranoid. But anyway. Uh, you got Dr. Coley on your show. I would feel so good. That's like a at home doctor well, she, all the time well, she was on the show today and uh between shows i was like dr coley what's up over here i'm like where's your appendix at and she's like sit down in your chair do you mind if i like touch you here and i was like yeah but we're I, if you're not watching a video i know where your appendix is it's like you know that little hip bone yeah. uh-huh. right inside that on your right side is your appendix oh. but my pain is like up higher you think it's just gas she said it could be like you know you got to go to the bathroom i don't mean to be talking about bathroom and stuff every episode but maybe it's something like that so i'm drinking a ginger beer to like get it cooking you know what i mean maybe it's something in there sit with your legs up that'll get it going (laughs) or or i've been doing yoga a lot and i think like when it gets really hot in there you really get a good stretch in and maybe i pulled like a little something i don't know what's going on but i'm getting old and paranoid well i do the same well i like hang on we have to i told jeff i was like i like your little not track suit, but I like your outfit today. Oh, we're going into it? No, I mean, I was good. I, I don't know. I like your outfit. I got it. I, it, was, uh, it was sent to me by my algorithm on Instagram. And yeah, then I Jeff it. gets, you always get. I fall for it. Yeah, all the my time. My algorithm. Well, that's what an algorithm is. It figures out what you like. This brand, I'm not uh, doing a promotion or anything, but it's called Legends. It looks and, good uh, on you. And I like it. Yeah, they it know what soft. I like. And. You bought some cologne, and you said this stuff is supposed to smell like the real thing. <laughs> I did. Because I guess you said it. It yeah. pops up on my Instagram now. And so then, of course, I start looking, and there were, like, all these positive reviews about it. Do you like I'm it? I'm wearing it right now. I know. Do you Do you think it, it's legit? Well, I got three of them for 100 bucks. Oh so, you know, if you get one of those that I got that it replicates, it's over 100 bucks. So, I don't know. I just try little things. I think it's called ATL or ALT. Uh-huh. That's the fragrance. But I got one that smells like... Uh, they're not exactly the same. Yeah, but, but they, do they smell? Yeah, it smells good. They say all like, I wear it perfumes for work, you know? cause cancer. Like anything scented, like oh, trust me, I go down the rabbit hole with all this stuff. I wear perfume. I, I I'm not saying too. I like don't the wear. pine saw. Yeah, things. I just saw that on Instagram. It's weird. I gotta stay off Instagram. Everything we talk about. And then speaking of me, so okay, I have it on Thursday. I'm talking to a weight loss lady who is this is what she specializes in so i've been telling you all i have not drank in two months i've been eating clean weekends i'll let myself like i'll have like a hamburger or something um and the other day i I hadn't been on the scale in months because i didn't want to get upset if i didn't see the number move i get on the scale and have not dropped one pound since starting in January and I've been Jeff's like you've been very good you know I've been well you haven't been drinking yeah I haven't been drinking and um 
I, there's no reason why it shouldn't be down at least five pounds. So I'm talking to a specialist on Thursday, and I'm actually excited about it. A friend referred me to this lady. I'm doing a telehealth with her, and her brother uh, dropped 30 pounds with this lady. So I'm hoping she can give me some insight, but then again, I go... I see all this stuff on Instagram about like cortisol and how you can have a round face and like fat here. And I'm like, wait, is it my cortisol? So anyways, I'm going to have all this blood work done again. I think it's my hormones and also to um, just like with the breakouts, not to bore you all. I'll let y'all know. Uh, my pellet is fading out. I will probably get another pellet again, but I want to see what this lady says first and communicate with my doctor and kind of get a plan going because it's very, very discouraging when you know you're doing all you can and you're really trying. I'm getting at least 10, 10 to 15,000 steps a day anywhere like in that range. And uh, like today, I went on, on a... I think I went at three miles. So it's either three or four mile walk. And you just like want to cry when you hear it. And it doesn't help too when you have people on social media or on here on uh, on the comments. They'll be like, oh, Jordan looks awful. She looks terrible now and saying things. And you know you're doing what you can and you can't help it. And it's like, shut up. You, you got to, yeah. No, I know. no, I get that. I get that because I sneak into the comments too and I can't. Take well, it, I do the you know, comments because uh, I respond to people. Well, then you just got to block those people because yeah. they're trolls looking for attention and they're trying to be mean on purpose so you notice it. And everyone does. And you, But instead of responding and giving them credit to what they actually want, you got to just delete it. Well, the ones that make me laugh are the people, if you look, and it's on Instagram and they're writing you something super mean. And then on their profile, it's like, grandmother to five perfect uh, grandchildren, you know, or it's always got something like that Christian. Yeah. And I'm like, that's not very Christian of you. Yeah. But I, I always get like Pete, you know, like someone's like, I don't like what you represent or what you stand for. You should kill yourself. And I go to their profile and it's like peace in Ukraine. Everyone's equal. And I'm like, that's not very peaceful of you to tell me to kill myself. <laughs> I used to have this person. This is back when, after Leighton was born. And I, I think it was the same person. I would just block and she'd come back. Remember, I would tell you this. She would write me the meanest stuff and be like, you need to go kill yourself. Your kids, your husband hates you. Your husband's cheating on you. You're disgusting. You look gross. He likes his hot host. I mean, like everything. And then in my head, I, I would always be like, I want to see what you look like. Oh, for sure. Who, That's has all. The time, who has the time to write me things like this? It's kind of like when someone cuts you off, you want to see what type of person did that, mm -hmm. right? You want to get a look at them. I always want to get a look. But unfortunately, you know, it's always, it's always a picture of like a, a dog or something or a flower. And I'm like, oh, real tough guy yeah. over here. You know I'm getting tired of? I don't want to go off on a little oh, rant gosh, here. Oh, here we go. I, I'm getting tired of everything I say. And I know we get a little bit more. We don't get political on this podcast, but sometimes we have uh, things on Daily Blast Live. That but you have to. I have That's to talk about. And I'm not. I'm not a political analyst. Like people think I'm a journal. I'm not a journalist. I'm not a political analyst. I'm but just you don't giving, try to be. We're not. The, the show is not that. We're not stating facts. We'll read facts off of a card, but I'm not there to debate somebody. I'm not like Don Lemon. Come on here and debate me. I'm, that's not my job. You're basically giving your opinion. I'm just giving my opinion think. on what I see and how I feel, whether, whether it's about the economy or just positivity and people in general. And even if I'm like positive and I'm like, hey, you know, like sometimes I'll try to give you a little pep talk on, on here, you know, because I live by that. And I try to te tell myself when I get down every day about that. But it's getting frustrating now that in society, and I don't mean this to be political, it's just frustrating for myself, is that no matter what I say, whether it's positive, politics, whether it's being positive, whether it's getting in shape, every single comment now is easy for you to say you're a straight white male with privilege that was that has no problems. That's the answer to every blanket statement, every single thing I say is that that's the rebuttal. Like, so if you're trying to bash me, easy for you to say you were born into white privilege and that's all you have. And everyone's like, yeah, I noticed the same thing. And everyone like gives social points to whoever wrote that. I'm like, 
I was trying to be positive on here. I was trying to say like, hey, you need to get up earlier, change a couple things, start by making your bed, like just little tips like to make your life better so you're not such a miserable person. And that is your response to everything in a blanket statement, whether I'm talking about politics or getting your life in order, that's getting a little old. And I know it's new to society, but that's getting a little old for me. Well, you're not. And you weren't handed anything. You've were, I've been with you since you were 31, and I've watched you. We lived in a crappy apartment in L.A., and you have got – we have a beautiful house. We don't show it, and we're very humble, and we're very modest people. And you – got where you are because you struggled. You got told no. You've done embarrassing music videos. You had to throw that in there. You've done embarrassing auditions. I went with him a couple times and sat there and watched you do those. And you got where you are because you you worked hard. No, and I I wasn't trying to fish for a compliment. I know where I come from and I know uh, the work I put in and I know the rejections that I got and kept going. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that in society... It's just like that is a blanket statement for any sort of comeback. And it's like kind of in the philosophy now of society. So if like you do something and I'm at, you know, Burger King and I do something, oh, oh, it must be because you're a straight white male with privilege. It's like, what are you talking about? I didn't know you were in line. It's like whatever it is, if I accidentally cut you or whatever, uh, you know what I mean? If I did something by accident, that is like a blanket statement that's acceptable to say now. And I'm, I'm already tired of it, even though it's just new. It's like, you don't know me. You can't just throw a label on me like that and then just move on with your life. I don't know. It, it bothers me and it probably shouldn't. I should probably take my own advice and not listen to those few comments that write in. But it's just now when you are having a debate with somebody and I'm not saying on my show or anything, it's a, it's easy. That's your, that's your, you know, roundhouse punch. That's your go-to. Like if you're getting beat up in an argument, well, you just throw that out there and then, and then you win. Well, you're a good person and you're all about positivity and you're all about, you love everybody. You love learning about people's cultures and other countries. I see it when we ride in our Ubers. You're all happy. I love love that. I know. I really do. People love to hate other people. You do a great job on Daily Bus Live. I'm not in, I am not just saying this because he's my husband. If I think he did a bad job on the show and I watch, I'll tell you, right? Yeah. I'll be like, I don't agree with what you said. I don't think you did a great job today. You seem mad. You seem like this. And I tell him exactly what he, what I think. And I think you're the voice that people want to hear because you are just the, it's a voice of reason. You just say you're very honest. You're very blunt. People don't like that these days. People get offended by honest and blunt. Yeah, people you, don't like no. things I say. And I feel like I respect people more who are open and honest. Yeah, I'm just giving an honest opinion. But it's if you, in today's society, again, I, got, I kind of got into the comments of the show this week and I shouldn't do that. But it does affect me. You know, like I, I've been doing this for a long time. And negative comments affect me and I'm used to them. So I could imagine how it affects you or any listeners out there. It doesn't matter how many followers you have. It's those comments hurt, you know, and they add up and people get frustrated and it ruins your day. But it's like, it's just... If you disagree with any aspect, if there's a list of 100 and you agree with 99 and disagree, disagree with one from someone else's point of view, you're, you're an enemy. You're, you're, there's that blanket statement. You're just a white privileged guy who doesn't understand the way things work. And I'm like, man, I just, in, I just agreed with you on 99% of your points. I can't have one point to agree with? No. Well, this is this I don't know is what social made, I didn't, media I didn't mean for now. This to go over here, but this is how social media is now, and people a lot of times are like, "Oh man, it must be awesome being on a reality show." I want to be on a reality show, and I'm like, uh, "I'll give an example. Someone I know, uh, I'll be vague because they probably don't. Someone their loved one wants to be on a. She's younger and wants to be on a reality show, and I was like." I don't think it's a good idea. I wouldn't do it. I would not advise anybody because when we were on, you didn't have Instagram. You didn't have Facebook. You had YouTube and people would kill you in the comments. Now it's just all the time. And if you don't have thick skin, 
you can't, it could beat you down oh, for, and you yeah. can't handle it. I'm used to it and dealt with it. My comment, the comments I get more so are, it's more so uh, about my appearance. Like you're not attractive or you're fat. I always, I mean, I've always gotten the fat comments or your husband's hot and you're not, you know, how is your husband with you? Like things like that. I don't but mind that comment. I, yeah, I'm just like, I'm whatever. Just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, I'm kidding. I know what you're saying. I'm trying to make light but of it. You're, but for young people that go on The Bachelor and Big Brother, I mean, I feel bad for them. And the Big Brother people, the audience, I'm not saying everybody, but those it's, people it's that harsh. It, they are brutal. They don't forgive. The, all they do is just bash you from something from 15 years ago. And you're like, are you serious right now? Yeah. Or people compare me to a 22 year old kid. And they're like, you've changed. You act different. You act this. Well, you've seen me probably go through different changes. I'm a mom now. And your body you know? changes having kids and emotionally. Yes. Your hormones. Or people, your face. I'm like, what I, if I go back and see that, I'm like, I look like I'm 18 yeah, years you old. Do. I mean, we both and do. I, it was or a long time ago. Like your voice, your voice is annoying. Things like that. I mean, imagine you all out there putting yourself out there, your life out there and somebody critiquing how you're dumb your looks, everything. Imagine how you would feel if you heard that all the time. Well, a lot of people would say, well, I would love the opportunity to do that. You know, but, it's it's just like, you, you know, it, I don't know. I, I just, I'm just kind of venting here. I'll, the weekend will be fine and uh, I'll be fine too. But it's just, it, it got me. And then when people come for like, because they don't agree with an opinion that you have. They come after your they job. They come for your job. It's like, come on, man, what's going on? Like, if that person's a real person, their boss should see that and I should come for their job. But I, you know, it's like, it's just, it's, it's getting, online's getting a little ridiculous and you got to just stay out of the comment section or try to m manage your own somehow and like block people like that. So when people, I definitely have some people that been coming for me a long time and they've been writing my boss. Luckily my boss is cool and everyone at my work is cool like that. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, sometimes it gets on you and I'm just, I'm just, and then you've lost there. jobs. Jeff has lost jobs because of things like that, where somebody has come after him and people, instead of knowing who he is and knowing that you're a professional, you're great at your job, you're great at what you do. They listen to that person and, yeah, and that, they've lost. I'll get to that story. I don't want to get into that right now, but that voice out there is getting a little bit louder. I'm not saying in particular, I'm saying just in general, that voice of negativity is just getting louder and people are trying to adjust. Networks are adjusting to try to balance and accommodate those trolls. And it's like, we need to get away from that. I mean, well, maybe I, it's a personal decision, but I don't know. It, I, I could see how it affects someone. And especially I'm worried about it for young kids and our kids. They're not on social media. Obviously they're five and seven, but when the time comes and there's teenagers and they are on social media and you can't avoid that. It's like, I hope there's some sort of regulation and people have a problem with that too. Like, don't tell me or regulate what I do. But for me, I want kind of some regulation in social media for our kids because it's a it's a harsh world and I'm 45 and it still affects my life. Imagine a teenager, you know, that doesn't really know the world and people picking on them and stuff. It's it's happening now with teenagers and I, I don't know. I don't people like it. People have committed suicide yeah. from it. Teenage suicide in women particularly is sky high. Sky high. So well, our kids are having social media yeah. anytime. Today. Anyway, I, that was kind of a therapy session. I think it's session. weird when parents make social media pages for their kids. I find that very weird. And it's like run by mom, run by dad. I find that so weird. It's different. Like we put our kids on our social media, but I'm not like showing my kids aren't like doing videos yeah. by themselves. That's Even weird. if you do, just be careful, you know, be careful. All right, let's take a quick little break. I don't know what happened there, but... <laughs> Jeff's venting. I was venting a little bit. Um, yeah, we'll be back. Welcome back. 
Um, I do want to address a lot of people always ask about your white shoes. I thought we addressed that. Well, they always say that your bot people still write me. It's got to be new people coming in and they say, why are Jeff's bottom of his shoes so white? They're my podcast shoes. I've explained that. I know, but maybe it's new, new people. listeners. Yeah. New listeners. I put these shoes down right, right when I'm done and I leave them here and I kind of wear, they're my in-house. I wear them in the basement shoes. You don't want to wear dirty outside shoes on your carpet. These are my podcast shoes. Dude, those slippers, when you get your blood work done, you should get those things tested <laughs> because it's disgusting. <laughs> I love these shoes. They're my favorite. I love sandals and flip-flops. They're my you favorite. Do. I've been walking <laughs> around outside. Gross. I've been walking around outside like barefoot. Feeling the ground. Oh, the you earth. mean like that? I was like, what are you getting Leveling at? out. Oh, yeah, it's supposed to be. We talked about that. Like it's supposed to give some energy. Yeah. To barefoot. So, so you were today. I walked around barefoot outside. Do you feel more connected to the earth? I guess I was like trying to get vitamin D because I've been sick. And I was like, just the sun on my face. I went on a walk and then I took off my walking shoes and I put these on. And then I walked down like our driveway and I walked in the grass with my bare feet. Yeah, you got to be on the soil. You can't be on concrete. Well, I did both. Okay. I'm testing them both out. Good for you. That's something. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I want to get back to like shopping online a little bit because I do get tricked a lot. And I thought it'd be funny to go over some tricks and I wonder if they're real or yeah. not. Like, do you know, do you ever look at something and you're like, I don't want it right now, but then it's in the back of your head and oh, then yeah. it pops up again and... And then you're like, that's why you screen grab it. And then it's in your screen, grab it. And then you make like a little album. Right. I'll have like a thing. It's Amazon. And then it's things I remember like, Ooh, buy these for the kitchen. Okay. So that's what I do. Like on Amazon specifically, I put things in my cart. Yeah. Not that I'm going to buy it all. I just put it all in yeah, there. So you have it. And, yeah. Yeah. And then hit save later. Yeah. Save yeah. For yeah. Later. For the things I don't want to buy, uh -huh. but like for clothes and stuff. So now the new thing is, first of all, here's the first one. When it's like, Two left. Oh. Order now, two left. Is that real? I don't know if it's real, but it gets me. Oh, me too. And I'm like, you know what? I've been looking at this for like a week or two. I think I'm going to get this outfit, you know, because there's only two left. But and that you, looks like good. Was it cheap? No, this was a little bit more, but it is, it's super comfortable. It Again, I'm nice. not promoting for them. I'm just kind of making like a shtick here about like the ordering online and stuff. But I don't know if that's true with the two left, but it is a good selling tool. I did hear... I don't know if this is true. I'm not like an Amazon person. They say certain things you don't want to buy on Amazon, like makeup, certain makeup, because you might not be getting the real brand. I don't know if that's a true thing. Well, everything on Amazon is kind of a knockoff, isn't it? I think like, don't so. They, I always see ads for like Lululemon knockoffs. But this, this is what confuses me. Walmart now is selling the same thing like Amazon has. So, for instance... I found like a pool. I love pullovers and it's on Amazon pullovers, pullovers. but it's not a swimming pool. It's a pullover pullover. And, uh, like what I have on now and the same thing was on Amazon with the same model is at Walmart. Like if you look online, because I think people could just, people buy things at Walmart. They buy like 50 of them and then they sell them on Amazon. Oh, is that what they do? Yeah, and you you put your you never saw like how to make money on Amazon. That always pops up on my phone. Well, I know people do Amazon storefront, but I think that's like influencers, or is that the same thing or no? I don't know how it works, but I know people go like to Walmart and they get like whatever, and uh, I say it's twenty dollars for a sweatshirt. Then they go to Amazon to sell for thirty dollars. I'm not gonna lie, you know, and they Walmart. use the same ads. Walmart's got some jams. I haven't, there is no Walmart. Where's a yeah, Walmart? Yeah, there's a here? Walmart down by us. Uh, oh. One of my girlfriends, she always, she's so sweet. Like, she was like, oh, there's this skirt. It's on sale for, I think, $5. You want me to pick you up one? And um, I love, like, Walmart's got good stuff. Well, they've come, Target too. You know what I mean? Like, for the kids Target's and stuff. Target's got, yeah. But they got some good. of their stuff is, like, they're uh, all in motion. That's what it's I'm saying. It's the same price as something expensive. It's, yeah, like, it's a Lululemon, like, knockoff kind of. Yeah. But it's great for, like, working out. It looks good. It feels good. So, they those companies have upped their game. 
a little bit to make it for because people can't afford Lululemon. You know, two what is it now? One hundred and fifty for like a pair of. Well, that's like what pants? all the high school kids wear over by us, and I'm sorry, it's ridiculous. I would not buy my kids one hundred and fifty dollar or a hundred dollar pair of. Uh, yoga pants. I can't even, I'm too fat for Lululemon anyways. It doesn't even fit me right. I'm Target and Walmart all the way. You're not, you're fine. You're no, get I get up. saggy crotch in Lululemon. They're made for like skinny people, not big boned girls with the booty. They are not for me. I do not like them. Remember when I was pregnant? I don't even know You where took me to that, uh, saggy you took me to a shop where did we go? Oh. And they had Lululemon. And you bought me those Lululemon pants that I could wear over my belly. And they, I got rid of them. I actually I threw them in the trash. people liked Lululemon because it puts stuff in the right spot. That's not true. Well, it doesn't put in the right spot for me. It does the opposite. <laughs> you it's you like, got saggy crotch? I got there? saggy crotch. I got love handles. <laughs> I'm like shooting. At, I'm, it looks like you. it tries to suck you in. And I'm just like... It, like, goes out. I look horrible in Lululemon, and I am not a Lululemon person All right, all. all right. We got it. We yeah. got it. You know what else they've been doing now and I don't like? And I had some stuff in my cart, and I deleted it. Now, if, like, you go to, like, check out, and you're like, hold on. I don't want to check out. Like, you know, you have to check out to get a discount code because oh, yeah. I'm all about discount Me codes. Because if, you know, like, you get 25% off, you're like, oh, I'm buying it. Yeah, for you sure. Know? Or if the code doesn't work, I exit. But once you go in, like my phone automatically like puts my information in there to make it easier. Like, and then you have to hit pay. Uh huh. But the information's in there. Then I'll ch and then the discount code won't work or something. So I'll check back out and go back to the store. Then I'll get a text and I'm like, "Hey Jeff, it's Amy. Um, I just wanted to know, are you ready to check out?" And I'm like, "What? Because it's like how did you get my number?" Yeah, but they are they take my number and I haven't even hit like I haven't even made the purchase yet. Once I, you know what I'm saying? Oh. Yeah, it's like a little bit. See, I don't know. You're that. pushing some boundaries, Amy. Yeah. And then I delete cool. everything. Then I go, no, Amy, I don't want to buy anything because you invaded my privacy. So there's this shop. It's a cheap shop. You didn't like that a story? Boutique. No, I'm going to give an example. I'm going back <laughs> on it. And I'll sometimes like put stuff in the cart. And then I go back and I put all the stuff I like. And then I'm like, okay, do I really like this? And I take it out. And then I forget to check out. And then I'll get a text message. Hey, items are still available in your cart. That's what I'm and saying. then if you wait three days or something, they'll be like, they'll send you a code to get like 20% off if you go ahead and buy it. Oh, oh what was I just going to say? I was thinking something. I tried to look at my phone. Yeah, they do do that. Um, and well, then I'm like, oh, 20% oh, off, I'll buy it. <laughs> you know what else is another good one? And I'm not telling people to do this, but it is a good little move. But actually, it's a good move by them because I get back in. So say I buy something, right? Yep. And then I don't like it. Okay. So I'll be like, you know what? I don't, I don't want that shirt or whatever. I'm just going to return those pants. And say the pants are $75, okay? If I go to a particular company and I know... I don't want to, I don't know. So if I go to return those pants for $75 a big, instead of returning that, I'll give you a hundred dollar credit to shop with. Do you oh, know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. They give you more money to shop. Didn't that happen on pants. Aviator Nation when you return something yeah, for me? It, it's, I don't know. It's a good, because I feel like I'm getting one over on them, but really I'm spending more money. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean though? But they give, instead of returning it, they give you an offer to like, we'll give you more, but you got to keep shopping. So then you don't get your money back for the pants and you end up getting more stuff. But you, listen, you're really good at, I feel like you've learned it from your brother and your dad. Did that make sense at all? Yeah, it made okay. sense. All right. To me, it made sense, about. but it's because I live with you and I know what you do. So it made sense to me. Does but it make me sound like a tight ass? You are, but I mean, it's good. When we're older, <laughs> totally, we'll have yeah. money. I totally um, am. No, you learn that I just stuff. like a deal. Listen, I'm very satisfied if I get a deal. I'm very much about a good deal. If you're a little disgruntled and I'm a little, uh, if you're a little disgruntled, I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> You've gotten that though. Uh, your family is very, like your brother, he's like a finance guy. Your dad's like very, very intelligent. And your mom too, like, I, they're not the type, like me, I'm a, I forgot what they call type of shopper. Like you see it and you're like, oh, I got to have it then when you see it. Your mom, like if I've gone shopping with her, she waits 
and she can go back and get it. Yeah. She's like, that's kind of what it. I, maybe that's where I get it. But my mom is the type when we would go to the mall, it's like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's get it then. Cause then you think about it. But it was so fun. Like when I was a teenager, it was a such a treat and a big thing. Like when my mom took me to, we had like our whole routine on Saturdays and used to get dressed up to go to the mall to shop. You weren't wearing yoga clothes. Like I remember wearing like booties with my mom and my mom at that time always dressed up and we'd go to the mall and she would take me to Guess or Abercrombie or American Eagle or 579 uh, Gadzooks. Those were places I always shopped off, shopped at as a teenager. And then then after we would do our shopping, my mom would take me and we'd go eat lunch at the same place every single time. And it was always like a routine for us. And it was always so fun. It was like a bonding yeah, time. That's not, I think we used but to things do that. back then, it, it's not like how it is now. I can't imagine having a teenager now and $100 for a pair of stretchy Lulu lemon pants. You know, I was shopping at places like that. And Target, I feel like then, when I think back at it, I feel like... Or maybe it was. Maybe my mom shopped there and I just didn't think about it. But I felt like we didn't really shop at Target then. Do kids give each other shit? And I'm sure they do. Like if you got Lulu, but then you get all in motion from Target, are they like, ew? Like do know. they get like that? I don't I know feel how like it is. kids now, everybody just, it's like whatever. People are rocking mullets. And I think high school perms. is high school. I think there's always a pecking order and picking sure. on and different things like that. Well, our kids are going to wear target and walmart so <laughs> i feel sorry for but them they get they're not getting the like, best of the best yeah but they just get but they get like i remember going school shopping like it's you know august or whatever when do you go back to school um, yeah august right yeah july august but then like in the end of july you go and get all your clothes you get your back to school shoes and that's the shoes you wear all year you know that's your pair don't well, mess our them kids, up. they're gro they're their shoes that they okay, Leighton's birthday September. Shoes that I bought him for his birthday don't fit now. Yeah, I know. So he needs new shoes. Yeah, th I know. But that's what's good about Target, because those shoes are, you know, cheaper and they run through them. Plus in the summertime, they don't use brakes. They use their feet and they're all ripped up, you know? Yeah. On the scooters and stuff. Oh yeah. I don't know. Well, let's take a quick break because we're getting boring and uh We'll, we'll talk about back. we'll talk about our trip at Great Wolf Lodge. Oh, okay. Okay. All right, welcome back. We did forget to mention this because Jeff was on his rant in the beginning. Uh, we had a wonderful time at the Great Wolf Lodge. We took the kids there last Friday. They were so excited because we don't really go many places. The water park, they could have stayed at the water park Do, all night. Maybe explain. I don't know if everyone knows what Great Wolf Lodge is. I feel like everybody who has a kid or a grandparent knows what oh, the Great Wolf Oh, they do? Lodge. I didn't know what that was. We really? don't have those in Chicago. Great Wolf Illinois. Lodge? Really? No. Definitely They're not. everywhere. Oh, they are? Yeah. I guarantee you there's one in Illinois. Oh, well. I know in North Carolina there's some. Anyways, it's a hotel that's connected to a water park and it's all kid-based. It's all kid-based. Kids are walking around. They're PJs, even parents. Uh, <laughs> First of all. Jeff had me, you wanna... <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Go. <laughs> let Jeff rant. go. All right. And then I'll let you finish the story. But, we had uh, a wonderful time. We had a great time. We had a great time. Really, the kids, it, they're older now. It was a little bit better. We got to spread out, do a lot of stuff. It's all about the kids. The kids with the climbing the wall. They were so good on the wall. They climbed that wall. I'm so, I, I thought know. Jeff was going to cry with Leighton. I got really proud. Wall. He went down like a champion. Like the way he rappelled down. I don't know. <laughs> it, 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 nobody cares. It's like when you show somebody a picture and then you're like, oh my God, I'm one of those guys showing a picture or video of my kid. And everyone's like, oh, not cool, dude. When is this over? I did that today. I was very impressed. Leighton, Leighton drew this elf, colored it, and cut it. And it looks like really good. And I'm so shocked he was able to do that. He but left like a little white part for the pupil of the eye, which is yeah, very Yeah, he's impressive. very, yeah, I was showing people today. I was like, look at this. This looks like something a fifth grader would do. All right. Okay, we're, keep going. We're losers. We're officially losers. Yeah, we're losers. Um, what was I saying? Oh, okay, real fast, and then we'll get back Adults to the kids. Adults and PJs at Yeah, hotels. listen, I don't care if you're at a resort that caters to kids and it's all about, like, you know, 
you're in a log cabin and you wear comfortable clothes. It's the morning time. Get yourself presentable, okay? I go down to get coffee in the morning and there's people like moms, I'm sorry, don't wear your flannel pajama pants with your dirty slippers and your house shirt and walk around the hotel complex. It's not your house. We've gotten too comfortable in society that people just give up. The way people walk around airports with their neck pillows and their sloppy shoes, walking around the airport, get yourself presentable. I'm tired of this. I'm comfortable and I don't care about anything mentality. I'm sometimes that person. Well, get it together. (laughs) Have some respect for yourself. (laughs) Don't make me laugh. I can't laugh. I'll hear a call. But it's just, I don't know. I was just. That was one thing Jeff noticed. He's like, why are parents walking around in PJs when we're here? And I was not in my PJs. You're at a hotel. You're not at like your friend's house spending the weekend. I think that's a thing though at the Great Wolf Lodge because everything shuts down at like 10 and you got little ones running around. Like Christmas time, it's really cute when people are in their PJs with their little kids and they do a story time. It's not cute. It's, It's you're dirty and sloppy. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You're more into that. I just, people need to present themselves a little bit better. You know, I understand if it's an emergency and you got to run to the store and get something for your kids. That's not the case. People are just, that's my sound effect for today. Yeah. There you I'm, go. I got some rage that I didn't know I had until we get on the podcast and then it just comes See out. See the negative comments, the negative energy. It can affect you. Yeah. But keep pushing my buttons because once I, Win the lotto and I don't need society anymore. Wait till I start firing back on those comments. And where are you I'm, going? Where are you going, Jeff? All, on an island? Oh, on a ranch? If you were, if you won the lotto, would you be on social media no, anymore? No. There are famous people. I wouldn't Hang either. on. There's famous people's wives that are on social media. And they're like probably worth $150 million, And they post like their houses and like where they're traveling and things like that. I'm like... Why would you do that? Like, I wouldn't, well, one, I wouldn't want anybody to know what my house looked like. I wouldn't want anybody to know I was out of town. Uh, I would, like, when we were at Great Wolf Lodge, we left on Friday, but I didn't post till Sunday, till we got back home, you know? Right, but never, posting's part of your thing, and you do make money off of that. I'm not, you know, it's, I'm not worth $100 million. No, but um, I'm saying if I was worth, if I won the lotto, I would d- delete my social media. I would be gone. No one I would, would know where I'm at except my family. I would know? buy a little, nothing fancy. I wouldn't buy anything fancy. I would buy, and people probably think I'm lying, but I won Big Brother and I still drove my 2003 Honda. So if that says anything, um, but I would get me a place in the Island, like an Island somewhere. And I would get me like a ranch probably somewhere and just be away from everybody. I would and take my kids. Or I would take my kids on trips and take a, I want to go to, we talked about this where, what is it called? A mall, um, it's, Amalfi Coast? Yes. In Italy. I want to go there so bad. I see like the water and everything. We're going. But then if you did, trip. okay, here's another oh, God, counterpoint. Here. What if you did travel? Like, I want to go see the pyramids. I want to see the Amalfi Coast and things like that. But then it's so beautiful that you want to share it. What do you mean you want to share? Oh, yeah. No, I wouldn't care about sharing it with people. If I had $150 million, I'd be like, whatever. I'd send it to my friends, like, here. Look, yeah, I would send I it. Go. I would make group messages. I would actually. What I would do is I would take my friends with me and I'd be like, don't worry about anything. Don't stress about money, travel, any of that. I would take all my friends and be like, we're going on a yacht and we're cruising. We're going to be on the ocean. We're going to have fun. I'd probably pay my friends houses off so they could enjoy. With How me. much money are you winning in the lotto? Your friend's house. I don't off. know. Make it. I'm making it up. Didn't somebody just win like seven hundred and fifty million? Yeah, and that's but then what they you gotta got. Think taxes and stuff. Well, I think Listen, they got almost. A- I appreciate my friends listening. I'm not paying your house off if uh, I win the lotto. I would. My closest friends, I'd pay their houses off. How many houses are you gonna pay off? I don't know. If I got, if I had won the lotto and had like five hundred million, yeah, I'd pay off my friends' houses so we could all have fun. Um, like together. what kind of friends? High school friends, my close, inner circle friends, my close friends. Close friends. I'm not giving names. You're making me play favorites. <laughs> because if you're paying off someone's, if you're paying off a friend's house and then another friend comes over, you better have a nice gift the for them. The people who are there for you. 
Wow, it's I'm already getting stressed out because then you'd have to take care of everybody, which I is would. fine. But it's like, but I'm a giver. I am such a giver. I like, I could go without, and all I care about is taking care of people, like people who but I. But my love. Pro- I, me too. I would love to take care of everybody. That'd be amazing. But my thing would be like, am I equal? Did I give enough to this person? Did I do that right, or did I not give this person enough for that? You know what I mean? I'm. I'm weird all like that. One of my really good friends in North Carolina, she's been with me through everything. I met her when I was like 19 or 20, and she's a single mom with kids, and I always tell her, I'm like, girlfriend, I got you. One day, if I win the lottery, I was like, you will not have any worries. So I would take care. She's one person I'll name. I'll take care of. And just remember, if you are our friends and we do win the lotto and we do go on vacation – don't wear your flannel pants. On. <laughs> Keep them in your room. Otherwise, you're getting kicked off the ship. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, that's it. This was just like very was random. random. Yeah. A little bit of everything. And hope you all liked this episode. <laughs> you got a little more Jeff. Uh, again. Don't leave any bad comments if you don't like it because it'll affect our lives. No, oh, trust me. Somebody's going to say no, something. No, no, no. Uh, I do have to. I did dip in the... The muddy waters of listen. You get it double time. I know, I know. We don't get people support us. Thank you for supporting us on this. Yeah, people uh, are normally pretty nice. Normally, it's like the strays that come that don't, or it's like somebody who makes sure they write something mean, but they don't even follow you, and you're like, why? Yeah, I just got to delete it. Yeah, just got to delete. And I'll let you. I'll keep you updated on my appendix. And I'll keep you updated. Hopefully, it's just gas on my weight. (laughs) <laughs> hopefully i get some answers maybe find out it would be nice to have i'm being serious it would be nice to have some answers of like what the i heck. think seriously once you get that blood work done and the testing done with somebody know, that knows how to read it and balance all that stuff out i'm telling i bet you it's something super simple and there's just a little bit of imbalance it's there. like my hormone it's something yeah. and, it's uh, something. and it'll be fixed it'll and be I know straightened it is. out yeah we'll figure it out um yeah. So uh, have a wonderful day. Be nice, everybody. Have a, I was about to say have a great weekend, but you're going to listen to this on Wednesday. Thank you again for liking, tagging uh, friends, downloading, subscribing, all that good stuff. And thank you for sticking with us. And thank you for everybody who writes nice comments. So bye. Bye. Bye.